need my coffee. I've got one. <laughs> Okay. One sec. Welcome to the Healthy Fit Podcast. I'm Dr. Kella Price from Healthy Fit. I'm here today with Anthony Amen from Redefine Fitness. Thanks for joining us this morning. Super excited to be here, Kelly. Thank you so much for having me on. Glad you could join us all the way from New York. <laughs> We're going to talk today about sports nutrition but let's learn a little bit more about you first. I know you experienced some bullying as a kid. How did this impact your career path and your desire to help people? Yeah, so when you take a step back all the way into my childhood, I was bullied from the point when I started school pretty much until the very last day. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. It's all right. It's, it's something that I just recently started talking to, I was telling you a little more and more about. I kept it very quiet and to myself because what happened was with the bullying, it made me very introverted. It made me very shy and I just didn't want to put myself out to the world because I was afraid the more I did and the more I spoke, the more I'd get bullied back into my corner to, hey, be quiet. No one wants to hear you talk. So to me, having that experience was I'm actually kind of grateful for it as obscure as that sounds because I hit rock bottom somewhere around eighth grade and that's when it was the worst of the worst and at that moment I made a decision in my life and the decision I made was I can't go any lower so I got two choices I can either a end my life and that's the end of it or b I can radically change who I am and how I perceive the world and be a different person. And obviously I chose option B because I didn't want thankful for that too. I just, when you hit that low and you just, there's no more going down. You realize that everything else in the world isn't that bad. And that that's how it's really gratefully impacted me where it doesn't matter what stuff gets thrown my way anymore in my life. I've been to the bottom. I know how to take it from that moment from being the lowest of the low and overcome it. And that's what's really the biggest defining moment from that and how it's really shaped my career. And that is, I, I talk a lot about this in my podcast and a couple other ones, but it took a lot of work to get, to change your mindset and to change your, the patterns in your brain and how you think. And it's something that's possible but it's the willingness to do it that really makes the difference. And that's like a whole nother podcast. We could talk a whole series just on bullying and how to overcome that. Cause I know that's such a challenge for so many youth today. 
I know you oh, had yeah. a serious <laughs> <laughs> concussion in college and I know you overcome that overcame that struggle to become the person you are today. Tell me a little bit about how exercise and nutrition helped you change the course. Yeah, so I got to first sum up what happened and then I can explain how that's impacted. So sophomore year of college, like you said, I got a really bad concussion. I'll leave out a lot of the details is a long story. Long story short, ended up not remembering three months of my life. I was just in a black room because I had the back part of my head, herniated every disc in my neck. And I was up to the point where like, I couldn't move, I couldn't look at things. And this struggle lasted for years where I went to 25 physicians. Yeah, I'm not making that number up. <laughs> 25 different doctors, a physical, you name it, I saw them. And it was to the point where they all told me the same thing. They can't help me. I can't, I can't help with my migraines. I had no range of motion. I couldn't raise my arm above this. This is all I had. My neck, all I could do was turn it like this, side to side, literally zero. And it was debilitating. And it was at the point everyone told me, we'll just get over it. Like you're just gonna live with this the rest of your life. Just take some drugs and call it a day. Now, why does this tie in? This ties in because like I said earlier, I experienced rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And I was able to change myself in eighth grade to be a different person, which I'm gonna be honest, that was harder than this was. And some people will wow. look at me and think I'm crazy saying that, but the mental challenge of doing it back in eighth grade made it easier for me to find difference and change my life through exercise. And that's where my story really begins because I wasn't athletic. I had, I actually hated working out. <laughs> I hated eating healthy. My mom used to take me to Taco Bell all the time because I always wanted it. I would get a 12 pack to myself. But after going through this injury, I saw how much diet and exercise played a role and how it could impact who I was and how I felt. And through complete and utter trial and error, I use those to help fix myself. I can do this. This took three years, by the way, after that injury to finally do this. Wow. And I cried like a little baby. <laughs> but it's possible. And it's about learning how the human body works. And everything is one unit. And once you really understand that, then you can really change your life and without getting into specifics of exercises, it's just everything's possible. And that's what I tried drilling into the heads of my clients. Like you can have the world's worst injury, but you need to find that blend of fitness and medicine where, yeah, medicine's great for a certain point. My whole family filled with doctors, I get it, but you need the exercise portion because exercise is medicine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I have seen, my clients transform themselves and change their entire life and their outlook through getting stronger through proper eating and exercise. So I, I really know that it takes a lot of effort and work. It just doesn't happen overnight. It's not a magic pill, um, but you are testimony that this is possible. I noticed that we're both Spartans and I love the philosophy of the the spartan races how did you get involved with obstacle course racing yeah so it ties into that once i was able to fix myself physically i wanted to push the limits of my body i wanted to find out how much of a limitation my neck would cause me and prove to everybody that there was no limitation there i, I could do more because when you have people telling you, especially these doctors that are top notch, one literally told me he's a physician, not a magician. He can't help me. Can't make this stuff up, but <laughs> you can't raise, you can't raise your arms above your head. You're never going to carry stuff. You're not going to be able to do a pull up, like all this stuff. You know, you can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. I wanted to show I can do this. And that's what that Spartan mentality pulled me in where I can do something. And I did all three of the trifecta. So you had all the way up to the beast, that 13 mile uphill. We did it in New Jersey, my now fiance and I. And let me tell you, doing something like that 
and putting my body through something that I didn't even think was possible. I blacked out mile eight and woke up at mile 12. Like I did it. Now I know that everything I'm doing in the gym, I can do twice as hard because I was able to do these obstacles. And I am a huge diehard Spartan fan. I got to tell you right now, I had the absolute pure pleasure. I have my own podcast show of interviewing Joe Decina, who, for those that don't know, he is the CEO of Spartan, and he is an absolutely fantastic guy. And then I got to interview the uh, director of Decafit, the new program they launched, Jared Cogswell. And that episode's coming out Monday. That one is jam-packed, all about Spartan, all about their philosophies. And awesome. the more I learn from these guys, like, the more I love it. I do everything I can to, like, push out, do a Spartan race, everybody. And I'm sure you feel the same way. Why, why do you do it? What's, what was your motivation for it? You know, kind of the same thing, because I can. Um, I had friends who signed up and said, hey, join us. And it was the same weekend as a Ragnar. It was the next day. And I my friends thought I was crazy, but I went out and did it. And it was an amazing experience. Um, I was actually on the course with Sean T. And he was filming one of his reality segments for it. And it was, it was a really great experience. <laughs> I think that Spartan is different than some other races because they really, when you're training as a group fitness instructor and you're teaching and preparing people for a Spartan, we're talking about uh, the different tenants and belief system that a Spartan has. And one of those uh, key pieces is nutrition. So I think that's so important because you talked about how you have to overcome the, the mental piece and how you didn't think you could do it. And it gave you so much empowerment. And I think the same, we can take that same philosophy into the kitchen with nutrition, because this is, I think, harder for most people than the exercise itself. Let's be honest, they come and they work out with us for an hour, right? And they kick their butt and they feel amazing. And then they're left to themselves for 23 hours. And it's really hard to manage healthy behaviors with everything that life throws at us, especially with the things going on in today's environment that you're stuck at home and maybe you're watching the news and you're seeing all the negativity and your kids are at home and they're driving you crazy. And so you're stress eating or emotional eating and it's a huge challenge. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand how to eat properly to fuel themselves, not just for something like a Spartan beast, but just for daily life in general. And so they feel terrible most of the day because of what they fueled themselves with. Um, so let's talk about how your personal nutrition has helped you in race performance, like that uh, Spartan beast. That's a longer race. You mentioned it's the 13 miles and 30 obstacles. It's their largest race um, for the average athlete. So let's talk about how you fueled yourself for race performance and kind of how that helped you get through all of the obstacles and the endurance piece of the running. So I'm going to talk about how to properly do this and then explain what I did. Long story short, we found out the hard way that the beast one, they purposely don't have nutrition stations. So no water, no snacks. I didn't know that going in. I thought it was like their other races where they had the sprint and the super where they give you like every quarter mile you get water refills or every five miles you get something to find, kind of fill you up. That was the point of the beast to be self-sufficient. My fiance and I didn't know that. We went into the race. It's part of the reason I blacked out. Part of the reason she had severe muscle cramps and still pushed through it like that could be really dangerous thankfully you didn't get hurt yeah <laughs> that's through our conditioning though which is the reason i believe we didn't get hurt and the reason and that go for it 
Oh, I was going to say, you know, that's a mistake that a lot of people make. I tell my clients as a running coach and a Spartan group fitness instructor, always bring your own stuff. Even if you think they're going to have stations, you never know what's at the stations. And I feel like, you know, for me, I have a sensitive body. And so sometimes things that I eat could react differently, but you always want to become prepared with things that you've trained with. Even the, t the water that you have at your house might be different than the, the makeup of the water, the minerals and things in the water that they provide at the race. So I never like to take chances with unknowns. And one of my best advices for people doing a race is come prepared. Always bring your water, always bring your own snacks so you know how your body is going to respond to the snacks. Don't put yourself in a position even if you don't think you, you need it, don't put yourself in a position that you could get sick or um, injured from not having proper nutrition. Even in the summer here, I ran five miles yesterday. I took enough water for my entire race, even though I had a stopping point that I was going to refill. And I also brought snacks, which I didn't eat, but I carry them in my bag. They're my emergency snacks because you never know what's going to happen. And um, it's really important to prepare yourself for the unexpected, right? Yeah. So you're smart and you've learned by just learning. I had to learn the hard way <laughs> where it's okay. Let me do something. And then I was, Oh my God, I should have done this. <laughs> now I'll never forget though. But like you said, how did it prepare? I could talk a little specifically about that because I see it all the time too. Our clients, they, they don't understand proper nutrition and it's not really their fault. And I'm gonna explain just a little bit about that, but long story short, our nutrition guidelines that constantly get pushed out are always far behind. They don't make any sense and they tell you to do one thing and then give you the other. <laughs> so that's how we get our nutrition and there's not much talking about it. We don't really learn about it in school at all either. So it's really just a lack of understanding and growing with it because the field does change every day, it feels like. Every day it's like, oh, this is good for you. Like eggs, eggs are great for you, eggs are bad for you, eggs are great for you, eggs are bad for you. It's like, okay, which one, pick? <laughs> and there's so many contradicting pieces of advice. Like you said, there's many different diets um, out there and I like to promote a healthy lifestyle with simple advice that people can sustain because it, a lot of people, when they go on a, on a diet, they think of it as a uh, temporary fix. And it's because the diet is so um, restrictive or it may be having you eat weird things or totally emitting important food groups that you can't not live with forever. So eventually you're going to have to go back. And if you haven't changed how your eating habits and you haven't learned, it makes it really hard to sustain any weight loss um, if that was your goal in the whole process. So I, I, I totally agree with you. It's very hard. And a lot of doctors only get one nutrition class in medical school. If that. <laughs> so, yeah. so they don't really have a good understanding of a lot of the nutrition and honestly look at some of the doctors they don't look like they're in physically good condition um, they're not taking good care of their bodies so it's really hard um, clients get really confused their their doctor doesn't know what to tell them the doctor wants to prescribe them medication for a condition but if you fuel the body correctly things like cholesterol and uh, high blood pressure and diabetes, all these conditions that we're prescribing people medication for, trouble sleeping. These are things that can be impacted through proper diet and exercise for sure. Like we train doctors here and I have to sit there and explain how to eat healthy and explain how to work out properly to these doctors because they, they've admitted like it's not they, they know so much. They got to know, like, I'm sure as you know, like books of, about everything, about everything. So nutrition, like you said, is just a little 
tiny bit piece of information and not something that they really want to focus on. So they just outsource it and they really don't, they don't know. So it's talk to people who do know. And the easiest way to break down, and like you said, a healthy lifestyle, because diets don't work. We call it L diets, yo-yo diets. Why? Because you lose 10 pounds and then six months later you gain 15 and then you lose another 20 by going one and then you gain 25. You see, you're constantly gaining more weight and your weight's going like this. Always up though, trending up that way. Because your body's confused and your body's not meant to be so restrictive on such research by eating healthy. And it is not a diet, it's a lifestyle. I can't explain to people that enough what we do here is I give all my clients an intro packet, which there's a nutrition guideline. So I don't tell people how to eat. I say, this is what fats are. This is what carbs are. This is what proteins are. Because then when you're looking at nutrition labels, you go, oh, that makes sense. Now I understand how to read them. Instead of going, total calories, I think it's this. I don't know what that means, but I don't think it's good for me. <laughs> it says low fat. It must be good for me, right? <laughs> oh, I love that one. Oh, there's no fat in it, right? It says yeah. no sugar on it. It must be good for me, right? <laughs> all, all the time. Reading labels, time. I agree, is so important. And I'm sure as, as I do, you do the same. Encouraging clients to eat whole foods, things along the outside of the grocery aisle, the things that are not processed and packaged. But in our lifestyle, real world not we're not always going to be able to do that i do have some packaged items in my pantry but i do read labels and sometimes it takes a long time if you're uh going to the store and trying to learn and find appropriate products to figure out okay what is this label really telling me what is in this product is this something i want to put in my body and teaching kids how to read labels. I love when I take my kids out and they know the things that they're not going to ask for, like they're not going to ask for that or that, but they'll look at a label and they'll come to me and say, look, mama, this only has six ingredients and I know what they all are. Can I get this? <laughs> and our kids, <laughs> yeah, or they'll get out a snack and I'll say, make sure you check the serving size. And without even looking, they'll know, the serving size on this is six crackers and they know that that's the appropriate way to eat and teaching and giving people the tools. Otherwise you might just grab a handful. You might have 14 crackers. Well, do you really want to have 300 calories in crackers, right? Yeah. Do you want me to break down proper eating? Like I can talk, um, we can, or we can talk more about your personal um, experiences with pre-workout meals and, and some sports nutrition. Let's, let's do this, combine those together. I have a great boom. <laughs> All right. So when you work out, do you like to do a pre-workout meal or no? I'm going to explain something that I want personal trainer pet peeve. Everyone write this down. Never, never do a, tra I'm going to say never, ever, 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 ever work out with a trainer without eating. Let us rephrase. Never, ever, ever uh, eat something. Why? Only tell, tell us why. Because I totally the agree. Biggest, the biggest reason is regardless of the scientific reason of why it happens, you have a way better chance of vomiting during a session. Every time a client has puked on me, it's because they have lied about whether they ate before they came in. Every single time. And then after they're throwing up, they go, oh, I didn't eat breakfast this morning. And I was like, well, what did you expect? I find you that people's performance is a lot better when they have that snack and from a safety perspective, you know, your blood sugars and the demands on your body when you're exercising are fairly great and your trainer is going to push you. Or if you come to uh, one of the live classes and you're doing, let's say, Spartan group fitness or you're doing a, a weight training class or even an intense 
uh, yoga, I teach Pio, um, bar and yoga shredded. We're burning lots of calories. I've had clients who have not eaten and they struggle with the performance in the workout. They don't feel good the entire time. And I've had clients get um, dizzy or lightheaded or have other adverse reactions from not having an appropriate meal. Plus, why? Well, because your blood sugar drops, you know, you and, and your exactly. your body is trying to work out, and you don't have enough uh, blood sugar, and then you start getting like lightheaded and dizzy and nauseous, and you have trouble doing burpees or getting down on the floor for for floor work, and it impacts the exercise. You're not getting the most out of it. Um, a lot of my clients even have medical conditions that really encourage you if you're taking medications to have food in your system um, to help regulate some of that too. So that's also an issue for sure. And I want to talk a little bit here about fasted workouts because that's what everyone's thinking in their head right now as a bottle because that's what I'm thinking in my head right now. What people always say, what about fasted working out? You see all this research coming out about fasted cardio and fasted weightlifting. I'm going to sum this up right now so everybody can have an understanding. First, fasted cardio. Fasted cardio has shown, so proof, that it has the same results as people who ate beforehand. The same. Why would you risk running the course of your blood sugar dropping too low if it has the same res results? Fasted weightlifting has adverse effects meaning you're not gonna perform well, you're not gonna be able to lift the amount of weight. You have a, about a 15% drop in muscular performance from doing fasted weightlifting. So it's imperative you eat properly and especially breakfast. Breakfast is, I'm gonna sound like a robot here, is the most important meal of the day. I don't care what anybody says. It's because you haven't eaten since the night before. So count how many hours that is. You're, go, you're sleeping you're eight hours a night. You're already fasted, you're already fasted. Now, you're so fast at going into breakfast, you need the food. You need to eat in the morning because that's when your body is going to use the proper nutrition for the rest of the day. And that's going to determine how good you feel from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. So eat what do breakfast. you like to eat for breakfast or before your workout? Because mine are two different things because I, I work out early. So I have a, like a snack before my workout to get me through. And then I have breakfast. Yeah. So... I am a big eater. I eat about 4,000 calories a day. So I love big breakfasts and I get made fun of all the time when I eat, but it's hysterical. My favorite is oatmeal, but I'm going to explain a little something about oatmeal. So oatmeal is great. It's full of carbs and it has fiber in it, but you need something substantial to hold you throughout the day. So what I do is I take a bowl of oatmeal. I put some PB2 in it, which is powdered peanut butter to get mm -hmm. some good fats in there. And then I take a scoop of protein and throw that in there. So then I have all my macronutrients covered. It's extremely filling and it can get me through any intense workout I put my body through later. So that's my favorite. You mix them up together. Perfect. I, I like the name, <laughs> but I'll often put berries in mine. I like a little bit of a sweet and the juiciness of the berries. Um, I love berries for their antioxidants. Um, Sometimes I do it with quinoa too. Quinoa is a great alternative to oatmeal in the morning. Um, and, and quinoa, unlike oatmeal, I don't really like to make oatmeal in advance. Quinoa, you can make a whole bunch and then I prepackage it because I'm non-functioning in the morning when I wake up for my 4 a.m. workouts. That's fair. So quinoa, so you, all your listeners know, is one of the only vegetables that's a complete protein. What do you mean by complete protein? It has all the necessary amino acids for your body to produce to count as protein. Unlike other veggies that are missing some amino acids, it's important to have a complete protein profile, which is where quinoa comes in and why it's really good for you. Besides that, all meat products are complete protein. So all you uh, vegans out there, it's imperative that when you're eating because you guys do not eat enough protein. It's actually mind-boggling how little protein you guys eat. But take your vegetables, find out what they're missing, add them together. A great combo, rice and beans. 
rice and beans equal complete protein. It's like meant to be together. <laughs> like but, peas and carrots, right? <laughs> exactly. Peas and carrots. I don't know if those equal complete protein profile, but they just go together. <laughs> So because I work out early, when I get up in the morning, I'll typically do a protein shake, uh, not with a lot of things in it because I don't like to have a lot of calories before I work out. You kind of have to play around with it, right? Some people, um, certain things for breakfast before a workout don't really mix um, yeah. and, and won't make them feel good. Or I like a piece of um, toast with peanut butter on it, just a half a piece of toast. Sometimes I put apples or a couple slices of banana on top and kind of make it into a, a, a healthy peanut butter and fruit sandwich, if you will. That sounds really good. Yeah, I play around with it because I, like I said, I'm a big eater, but I'm one in a billion. <laughs> no one can eat as much as I do and then go into a workout. So it's important to kind of, like you said, find that balance. But never do fasted. Even if you just, like I tell my clients, start, if you don't eat breakfast, have a little piece of bread. Absorb that stomach acid, get a little carbs in you, just something to satiate you uh, just a little bit before you do any kind of exercises. So it's important to please, please eat before. <laughs> do I say that enough? And time period is important. If you're working out within a half an hour, so let's say you're eating breakfast and you go work out within 30 minutes, avoid having big meals because your body doesn't have time to kind of digest through it. Have something quick. So fruits, a little piece of bread, something like that. That's easy for your body to digest. If you can eat an hour beforehand, that's ideal. I know for some people who like working out at 5 a.m. that might, I'm not waking up at 4 a.m. to have breakfast. I get it. <laughs> Just something, get something down. Protein shakes are great. Have your body start taking in protein because I don't know why, but a lot of studies have shown that mostly females don't get enough proteins in their diet, which is the reason that they don't really lose weight as well as guys do, besides guys having higher metabolic rates. I know it's a thing. We're blessed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it is important to make sure you get enough protein in your diet and really pay attention and track what you're doing. Does that make sense? Let's yeah, that's great. Let's talk now about if you're going to an all day competition or a race, what kind of snacks do you like to pack in your food kit? So you need to have carbs. <laughs> carbs are mandatory with any workout that's over an hour. So your body will start like, eating itself if you're working out for more than an hour straight. And that's why it's important to constantly fuel because you don't want your body to start breaking down your muscle. Isn't that kind of productive? Hey, sure. I'm gonna build this muscle then start eating it for fuel and energy as a back reserve. So it's important to make sure you're getting carbs in and constantly pumping your body full of carbs. And depending how long that race is, it's important to follow those. So they have those uh, sugar tablets those like high gummy, they're like gummy flavored things. I don't know, they're delicious. I don't like I those. Eat them all. Oh, I love them. <laughs> See, and, that, Quick. and that's okay. Like everyone's gonna give you different advice. I like to take a more natural state. I don't like those gels. They irritate my stomach. They have a lot of fructose, like corn syrup stuff that I don't normally yeah. eat. And so if I eat one of those, it impacts my performance because I start to feel physically ill. So instead of that, I'll pack things like um, dried mango. I like raisins a lot. I, the boxes of raisins are my friend, as long as you don't eat too many. <laughs> I, I, I ran too much it all fiber one. makes me sick. That's why I like, <laughs> I love fiber, but during race, it's like you need to. Well, they're small. The raisins are small. A lot of people like the little sport beans and things. Raisins are small. You don't have to stop to actually eat them and you're not going to, they're harder to choke on than some of the other things that you have to chew and chew and chew. Yeah. Um, but I definitely also advocate doing carbs. I'll pack uh, multi-grain. I love the Dave's killer bread because it has no preservatives in it. 
And that part I will is put, so good. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'll put some natural peanut butter on it. And I slice apple and sprinkle um, some cinnamon and a little bit of honey. That's another sugar source for those um, sugars that your body needs, but it's natural. And the sandwich keeps beautifully. You would think that apples would get brown, but if you put them in a sandwich, the sandwich keeps in your bag all day long and it gives you, it's a, all those complete nutrients that you need to fuel yourself for the race. And it's, for me, it's very easy to digest, um, so it's one of my go-tos. I also carry pickles. Some people like salt tablets, but I, I can't do the salt tablets. So I have I make homemade pickles and I put them in Ziploc bags, the little slices, and to replenish my salt during a longer period of competition, I eat the pickles. You want to hear something funny? You know what I do for salt? Pedialyte. Get everything right there. We get, it's great source of hydration. It's not like Gatorade or any Powerade, which is full with unnecessary stuff, which is why I like Pedialyte. And I'll just get those packets and I'll put it in my order pack and just sit that all day. It's perfect. <laughs> A plus I definitely to Pedialyte. use the electrolytes in my uh, water source as well. Uh, to try to replenish as you sweat, you need to put that back in your body and it will help keep you uh, better throughout the whole race. You'll feel a lot better and perform a lot better. So after the race, what do you eat as a post workout snack or meal? It's important for everyone to know after workout, you need to eat what? Protein, woo! <laughs> but important, uh, some people don't know this, Protein, in order to digest properly, needs to have some kind of carb source with it. Your body needs carbs, which because carbohydrates are energy, to use that energy to break down the protein to properly fill your muscles. So it's important to make sure you have a combination of the both. I'm a big uh, fan of just eating. I don't, I, I'll make whatever the heck food I <laughs> Oh, I make meals like this sometimes. It's crazy. But otherwise, if it's quick, it's a protein shake. But I'm making sure there's some source of carbs in there. I'm not just taking protein powder, throwing in the water. I'm finding fruits. I'm making a smoothie out of it. I'm blending it up. I uh, try to get a lot of micronutrients into it by adding some veggies. So it's just important to make sure you have a properly substantial meal. Your body just went through an enormous amount of stress. So it's important to really properly refuel yourself afterwards. And eating time period, the jury's out, whether they eat up to an hour after, or up to a half an hour, whatever that ideal is. So just try to make sure it's that hour mark. Fuel your body as quickly as possible. Don't go throughout a long period of time because your body's still burning calories after you exercise. People think that once you stop working out or doing these races, like the second you stop, you're done burning calories. That's not true. Your heart's still pumping a lot faster. Your body's still exhausted and trying to replenish yourself. It's still burning at a higher caloric rate. So it's imperative that you understand this and try to get your body fueled as quickly as possible. For sure. And you mentioned carbs. And for most of America, they're probably thinking like bread, pasta, rice. Um, they don't understand that you can get carbohydrates from fruits and vegetables, our fiber-filled carbohydrates. It doesn't have to come from something uh, processed or what you would normally think as carbs are bad. Well, there are carbs are bad if you eat all like donuts and cakes or <laughs> pizza every day. <laughs> Those are the type of carbohydrates we don't want to be the staples in your diet. A lot of my carbohydrates actually come from vegetables. Yeah, so I like this, and I tell this to all my clients, that nature has its way of having a golden ratio of fiber and carbs. And why is this important? Because fiber helps prevent blood sugar spikes. And that's what's gonna lead to a lot of adverse effects. So people, if you're constantly filling yourself with carbs that don't have much fiber in it, your blood sugar is going to go like this. 
and that's going to be causing the onset of type 2 diabetes and it's important to really understand that when you're eating like sweet foods like fruit and fruits they have fiber in it and i'm going to break this down all the way to simple to sugar look at sugar sugar comes from sugar cane i want everyone to google what sugar cane looks like it is literally a bark so if you're going to get the smallest amount of sugar out of it you got to eat basically a tree limb which is so much freaking fiber in that just to get that little bit of sweetness for the sugar but we're breaking that down and processing it so that's it's important to know that and to say hey look nature says sugar's good but i'm doing sugar with it looks like a freaking tree bark like that's how tough it is <laughs> so eat your fruits eat your veggies i know that a lot of people like always they don't like the fruit and carb aspect let me tell you something no one in the world has ever gotten fat from eating too much fruit so eat all the fruit you can eat all the veggies because they're chock full with so many nutrients that it's just more important to get that in your body than it is for a lot of other things. And I just never put a cap on it. I don't even count just my calories. I say unlimited fruits and veggies all the way. And that's well, how I feel with those. Well, it's interesting because you can eat an entire bowl. Spinach is one of my go-to veggies and I eat it like a snack. I'm an evening snacker when I'm watching TV and relaxing with my husband. But I don't snack on chips. I make my, I call it my salad plate. And I make our salad box. I have this little container and I fill it with salad, probably about two cups of spinach greens. I usually get a handful of cherry tomatoes and sometimes a low fat mozzarella cheese stick. And sometimes if I have leftover sliced chicken, I'll eat the chicken and I eat it like chips. Um, but I can eat two cups of spinach and I think the calorie count, if you're looking at calories, is like 25 calories for that spinach. And my body's gonna burn more than 25 calories to get all of the great superfood nutrition out of the spinach. So it's a win-win. I'm getting all of this nutrition and I'm not eating mindlessly in front of the TV, something that's bad for me. I think a lot of people, you can't go wrong with vegetables. I say if you're hungry late at night um, as a snack, get those raw veggies in. Find something that you like, whether yeah. it's carrots. But carrots are my kids' go-to. And I, yeah. they, I'm surprised they haven't turned orange. I have to change up the vegetables. I, I find the things that they like, and I buy a lot of them because I have four boys. And so... Growing boys eat a lot and they're hungry all the time. And so I try to make sure that we always have the lettuce and the cucumbers that they like and carrots and um, hummus so that they can eat a healthy snack instead of going towards looking at chips or things that are um, non-optimal. <laughs> Word of advice on spinach. I love spinach. So it's a one out of a billion case. Don't eat a full bag every day. I, one of my friends went to the ER because she was eating a bag of spinach a day. Why is that bad? Because spinach is chock full with vitamin K. K clots your blood, blood up. It's really good for you. You need it, but it's fat soluble. So it takes a long time for your body to digest it. Just limit. Don't have a bag. Have half a bag. <laughs> well, the lesson there would be, you know, well-balanced meals. I'm not just eating spinach. I well do balanced. I, I love probably that. eat about four cups of spinach a day on average, but I also eat well-balanced. I, as you said, balancing, having a complete meal. If, if you have your plate and half of it is your vegetable, then you have a quarter is your protein and at lunch, a quarter is your carbohydrate. And so you have a, a well-balanced meal. Too much of anything is not good. As Ooh. a kid, I used to <laughs> love watermelon. You eat too much watermelon, you get an upset stomach. My, my son, when he was little, he loved prunes. You eat too many prunes, guess what happens? <laughs> you poop your pants. Luckily, he was still a toddler. Um, but... and. Too much of anything is, is not good, right? 
anything, oh, yeah. you know, moderation and well balanced. And we we need to make sure that we're trying new things. And sometimes I go to the store with my kids and we're looking around and they say, oh, they'll pick up something that looks really interesting out of the fruit and veggie produce. And they'll be like, what's this? And I use my phone and it's amazing the things phones do if stuff isn't labeled. And you take a picture of it and it brings up information. You can read about it and you can Google a recipe. You buy one of something and say, oh, let's take this home and try it and see if it's something that we can incorporate into our diet, trying new things. Uh, we found out last year, my son, we bought some Brussels sprouts and I never liked Brussels sprouts as a kid, so I didn't buy them a lot. <laughs> and I think it's the way my mom prepared them. Sorry, mom. But my teenage son has developed a way to prepare Brussels sprouts that everyone loves. And so that's one of our staple veggies now. And had we not branched out and tried something new and looked up another recipe to try it again, we may still not be eating Brussels sprouts. But now that's one of our uh, staple items in our, in our refrigerator and our freezer. Yeah, well, we're man, about so out of time. I have had so much fun talking to you. Um, we, I know you have some big things going on this weekend. Tell everyone about your fitness summit. Yeah, so any personal trainers, any group exercise instructors, anyone involved in the fitness industry, tomorrow we're doing a free virtual business summit. It is not something I'm personally running. It's actually my friend, Justin, him and I got to meet a while back actually through podcasting and he's putting this event on. He has tons of guest speakers on there. I already pre-recorded my session, but it is top notch. I dive all into selling and the art of the selling process, which I know a lot of fitness people struggle with. Reason being we get into fitness because we love it because we want to help people. We don't really do it for the money. And I understand that. But if you don't know how to sell, you're not going to succeed in this industry. So it's important so you can to put the, the link for us um, when we get off the podcast in the comments. So if someone wants to join oh, that. Yeah. And I know you have some giveaways. What are we giving away? Two giveaways. Two important ones. The first one, we're going to give away three free weeks of our accountability program. What is the accountability program? It's an online coaching program. So it is not personal training. It is a way to guide you to hit, make you hit your target goals. You'll meet with one of our coaches once a week through a video chat like this. We're going to dive into the reasons of why you're trying to hit something. Then we're going to set daily tasks depending on what your goal is. So it's all going to be customized and you're the point is to make sure you're staying accountable to those days that you're not doing your training, the days you're not doing uh, ABC, to really keep you on track to make your goals more manageable. And then the second giveaway we're going to do is uh, five free classes for Redefined Fitness. They are virtual, so it doesn't matter where in the world you are. <laughs> you can hop on in. They're all Zoom related. You just got to download our app. It's just Redefined Fitness and Google and in Apple, and you guys can hop on those classes virtually. They are chock full of information. They're so much fun. I personally teach an ab class every Sunday at 9.30. It is great and challenging, so highly recommend checking those out as well. Very cool. So we'll give you a, a little while to post in the comments if you wanna be entered in those drawings. Probably on Monday, uh, you can do the drawing for those. Thank yeah, we'll you, do it on Monday. Anthony, so much for joining so us much. today. I really enjoyed so. it. Thanks for watching Healthy Fit Podcast and listening to us. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much.